Please meet Joey. He's sharp, well-educated, and well-spoken. He has the personality to be the perfect project development manager or product owner or business analyst. Joey puts his heart and soul into his profession, serving his customers and his team as best he can. Joey's passion is to lead his team in creating a fabulous product for his users so they, his team, his customers and his boss can be all happy campers. But succeeding in product development is hard. It's straight out unlikely. It must be one of the toughest endeavors humans could set out to do. I would even claim it is dangerous to try. Technology is complex, new and ready to explode. The customers and users don't have time to help guide the product development. They just want something delivered yesterday. The deadlines are totally unrealistic. All my teammates have their own needs, ego, and interests. But like so many other product owners and project managers, Joey wants to succeed. He wants to create a fabulous product. So Joey puts in the extra effort. He works long hours. I mean, really long hours. So there is no surprise that Joey gets tired and worn out. Despite Joey's heroic efforts, his customers are not too happy about the progress of the product and his development team doesn't think he is the world's best product owner. I'm frustrated. How did we end up here? The problems start when Joey has meetings with his customers. Joey knows the customers should tell him the improvements they want to achieve, the end state, their goals. But all they do is suggest one technical solution after another. Even worse, some customers don't even know what they want, just that they want it fast and cheap. Please don't tell me the technical solutions to build. Tell me what your goals and improvement needs are. They agree. Everyone agrees to this. But then they proceed by requesting even more solutions. Could you please put a yellow button right there, in the top right corner, that takes me directly to my report? Aye, aye, aye. One day, please, give me a rest. Joey then writes this all up in a set of user stories that he gives to the developers. The development team places these user stories in their product item backlog list, a list that is already overloaded. They all grew and prioritize, develop and deliver. That is when Joey's problems really become visible. Even when the development team develops and delivers exactly what the customers asked for, the customers are unhappy. They say, This works differently to what we are used to. I don't have time to use this new system. It seems difficult to use. The technology is too complex. It's slow. I found a bug. It does not integrate well with the software I already use. Nor with the way I work. Joey gets frustrated. The customers are unhappy. And the whole development team gets frustrated at Joey, as Joey has told them what to develop. Joey is not alone in his frustrations. Many, if not most, development projects suffer. The number one cause leading to project failure, unhappy customers and delays are the poor understanding of the customer's needs. Poor understanding of the improvements the customers are expecting for their investments. Too much focus on new technology. Let's use blockchain technology. Too little understanding of the domain of the customers and users and their needs. Now Joey takes his value first online course, where Joey learns some magical value first skills. Joey learns to listen to the customer's spaghetti thoughts explaining what they want and ask them why, 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 chip, chop, analyze, categorize, move from solutions to needs, specify, quantify, massage, and finally spit out concise, clear specifications describing the value improvements that customers and users truly need. Then, the next time Joey meets with the customers, they, as usual, tell Joey what they want, but this time, Joey is armed to his teeth with his new and sharp value-first skills. First, the customers tell him what they want. We need one password to log into all our apps. Joey then masterly recognizes 
this as a technical solution. Better left up to the development team. Chip, chop, chop. Why, why, why? Up to the higher levels we go. And Joey has found the real value, the real need of the customers. Then Joey pulls out his quantification skills. He quantifies the value right there in front of the customers. Wow. Yes. You get us. Then Joey's customers hit him again, this time with a list of functionality. Joey then skillfully points out that their current product already does all those functions they are asking for. His team working their butts off to recreate those functions would not create any improvement except by chance. Again, Joey pulls out his new magic value first tools. And before you know it, the customer has recognized on their list of functionality, the improvements that they are hoping to one day experience. Joey then goes back to his dev team. This time, he does not tell them what to do at all. No functions to develop. No poorly thought out technical solutions. No user stories to do. Nothing like that. All he tells them in certain areas, you have to improve the product quantitatively from where it currently is to new shiny levels. The development team members are shocked. They are, for the first time in history, not told what solutions to develop. They actually get to use their technical skills and creativity to suggest and as a team decide on how to create the improvements. This creates new energy and responsibility in the team. And to no one's surprise, the development team skills are far superior on technology than the customers and users were. And armed with an understanding of what the customers and users actually need, the dev team produced shiny new products. I would go so far as to call the new products fabulous. When users and customers get these fabulous products delivered, products and services that directly improve the values the customers need improve. They celebrate. They tell the world about it. Joey's boss is happy. Bling, bling, bling. Very, very happy. The development team is happy with their work environment and more importantly, with Joey. They now have a product owner, a project manager that knows how to capture the true needs of their customers and users and describe those needs for the developers in such a way that the developers know what to develop. They're all proud to call Joey their project owner or project manager. Ah, he can call himself whatever he wants, business analyst, requirement specialist, as long as he keeps his value first skills sharp. And Joey is content. This is a job he always knew he would be great at because he is sharp well-educated and well-spoken. But most of all, because Joey puts his heart and soul into his profession, serving his customers and his team as best as he knows how.